hey guys welcome back in this video we are talking about quantitative analysis and specifically we are talking about understanding the z table and the students t table now these are most frequently used in in probability and in hypothesis testing as well so we're going to quickly go ahead and understand that but just before we get into it if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel make sure that you subscribe it okay so this is a normal distribution and as you can see for yourself it is symmetrical on both the sides that means 50 percent of the data is to the right of this distribution and to the left of this distribution we have the other 50% of the data in the middle we have this mean or the median or the mode and uh, in a normal distribution I can have a mean of anything okay I can have mean as zero I can have mean of one two if I have a sales data I can have a mean of even uh, in, into thousands so the mean can be different in all the normal distributions that we see uh, when we pull up the data but comes to a standard normal distribution okay i'm talking about the standard normal distribution now so we have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one okay so this is the special property of the standard normal distribution and that is why this is one of the reasons why we convert a normal distribution because we have a standardized mean and a standardized standard deviation and this helps us to find any specific area that i want to find if i want to find area to this side i can use the z table which is meant for the standard normal distribution to find any specific values that i want in a nutshell you understand now why do we convert the normal distribution into a standard normal distribution okay so here we have the positive cumulative z table now over here in the very first column what you see is the z value and this is the second decimal place to these z values and over here starting from this till the end all these are the probabilities associated with these z values okay the reason we call this as a positive z table is because the values it starts from zero and then it goes to the positive side of the distribution so as you can see it starts from zero and then it goes to the positive side of the distribution so that is why we call this as a positive z table now there also exists a negative the z table and this is what negative z table looks like so it starts from zero and then it goes to the negative side of the distribution as you can see all these values are negative there's no positive value at all and that is why this is another table that exists for the other half of the distribution so all these probabilities they start from zero and then it just goes to the negative side of the distribution so hopefully now at least you're clear with the positive and the negative tables that exist for the z table all right now this is highly probable that on the frm exam you will be given only the positive table the table with the positive values and you might have to find the negative values as well but let me tell you with the help of the positive table alone you can go ahead and you can find any value of the standard normal distribution we're going to be taking a look at that and for the examples that we will be looking at we're going to be working with the positive table okay now the other confusion that most of the candidates have is what is the left tail probability and what is the right tail probability now this positive table that you see here you will see a distribution like this with a dark shaded uh, region here and this represents that all the z values that we have they are to the left of this distribution okay let's take one example so let's say that we have a z uh, z value of 1.65 now we go to 1.6 here right here and the second decimal is 5 so we go to the fifth value which is here right and wherever these intersect which is here so this is the probability for the z value which is at 1.65 okay now what does this mean this means that 95 percent of the probability with this value is to the left of this distribution so this shaded region that you see here this is 95 percent of all the area under this normal distribution so that's how you interpret it now there also exists a table which shows to the right 
of the distribution now as you can see here if you see something like this uh, the dark blue shaded region on the right of this thing so this means that this table will represent all the values to the right of the distribution okay so that's why we call this as a right tail probability but on the exam you're not going to be having this you will most probably have this which is the left tail probabilities okay now why it's known as the cumulative z table why uh, even in the negative table we have that as a cumulative the reason for that is because you do not have a specific value of this z at this point because we know that in a continuous distribution we cannot have a specific value and all these probabilities or the values that you see here okay they are cumulative up to a point so for example the z value of 1.65 it gives out 95 percent probabilities to the left okay so this essentially means that it is cumulatively it's calculating up to 95 percent of the probability okay it shows the nine up to 95 percent of the probability it doesn't show any one single specific value right here and that is why we have the probabilities that the random variable z will take less than or equal to this z value as we have calculated here so basically this is just the cdf of the z values so that's why we call this as a cumulative z table okay now one thing that i want you to understand from this image right here is that if this blue region is 95 percent of the area then what is this white region it should be five percent right because this entire normal distribution is 100 percent of the area right we, we know that this distribution is 100 percent so if i have this 95 percent from this table the other which is left out has to be five percent right all right so let's let's take some calculations and uh, let's understand this in a much better way now okay so here i have the earnings per share data of a particular company and i am interested to find the probability that the earnings per share will be less than 6.5 in the coming year so essentially having a look at this distribution basically i want to find the area okay on this side okay less than 6.5 it should be less than 6.5 so this is something that i am interested to find now what could be this probability or the area now how can i find that i i will have to refer to the z table now let me tell you one thing that this distribution that you see this is not a standard normal distribution because in a standard normal distribution we have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one and in this example we have a mean of four and the standard deviation of two so first of all what we'll do is that we'll we'll convert this into a standard normal distribution and to convert that we have the the z value formula which is x minus the mu divided by the standard deviation the x in our example is 6.5 that's what we want to find right the observed value is 6.5 minus the mean is 4 divided by the standard deviation in our example it's 2 once i solve for this and i get my z value as 1.25 now i'm going to go to the z table with this value okay so let's go to the positive z table so we want to find 1.25 the z is 1.25 so 1.2 is here and the second decimal place is 5 so it's here and wherever these intersect that is 0 0.8944 so with a z value of 1.25 i have 0 0.8944 to the left of the distribution so finding that from the z table we get the probability that the earnings per share will be less than 6.5 would be 0 0.8944 so this essentially means that we have approximately 89 percent of the area to the left of this distribution okay so hopefully you're getting the point here or what exactly we're trying to find so we can say that there is a 89 percent probability that the earnings per share will be less than 6.5 and where do we get this from the z table okay pretty simple now let's take another example okay now i'm interested to find the probability that the eps will be greater than 6.5 so basically i want to find the area or the probability on this side which is to the right of this 
6.5 okay so what is the first step to convert the normal distribution into the standard normal distribution we already have the z value as 1.25 and from the positive table we have already seen with a z score of 1.25 we have 89 percent of the area to the left of the distribution and that's what we have found here but now i want to the right of this 6.5 because i want the eps to be greater than 6.5 now this is also an easy calculation i know from the table we have already seen that if this is 89 percent okay then this has to be 11 percent because we know that the entire distribution is 100 percent right okay so essentially what i can do is i can just subtract this from 100 percent all right so 1 minus 0 0.8944 and i will have my answer as 10.56 okay so 10.56 is the area or the probability that the eps will be greater than this 6.5 now this one that you see here this is the 100% uh, so I've taken 100 minus the 89.44 and I get this my answer okay so so far we have seen how to calculate the value to the left we have also calculated to the right but now from the same positive table I'm going to calculate the value to the negative side okay to the to this side because I told you in the positive tables we do not have any negative values so let's take an example on that now just suppose that I want to find the probability of the EPS less than negative 0.4 so that is to this side so the very first thing that i'll do is i'll go ahead and i'll calculate the z score okay and i've already done here and the z score that we got is negative 2.2 okay so the z score is negative 2.2 now now this is something that i will search on the z table but we just have positive table with us so how can we find a negative value well in that situation i can find the z value for 2.2 the positive 2.2 because i know that this area and this area will be the same because we have a normal distribution which is symmetrical in nature so with the positive table i'll find this area and i will just put a negative sign for this area simple let's go to the positive table and let's find the value so back again on the positive table and we want to find positive 2.2 so it's here 2.2 and the second decimal is 0 itself so this 0.9861 but as you can notice 0.9861 approximately 98.61 percent is to the left of to this distribution right so 98 0.61 percent is to the left of this distribution uh, because this is a left tail probability table so what can we do i want to find this area the white area so how can i find that well it's very simple we know that the entire normal distribution is 100 percent so we're going to subtract this thing 100 percent minus 98.61 and that is going to be 1.39 okay i can convert this into decimal one minus 0.9861 and that is going to be 0.01390 so hopefully you now have a clear visual idea as to how we can find the other area that is left out so from the positive table we found that the probability of the only special less than negative 0.4 is this okay now we're going to go back to the negative table just to confirm that we get this as the final answer okay and as you can see negative 2.2 is here and yeah it's 0 0.139 so this is the second decimal place zero and this is the same answer that we got from the positive table pretty simple right so on the exam if given a positive table you can solve any calculations any area under the curve okay okay now z table is also useful in the hypothesis testing to find basically the critical values now this is very much important one of the step in hypothesis testing is to find the critical values and then compare it with the uh, the the test statistic that we have okay now how do you find these critical values yes you use the z table and you find that but let me tell you i've i've gone ahead and i've summarized the table and these are the most common 
significance level that we use in the hypothesis testing and the corresponding z values i've also mentioned it right here now i'm going to just solve one question here so that you understand where these values come from but i would say that and i would highly recommend that you remember these values for the exam this will save you a lot of time rather than finding it from the z table when it comes to the critical values okay so let's try one uh, i've got the right tail test here and i know the significance level let's assume the significance level is five percent this shaded red region is also known as the rejection region okay when we do the test statistics and if it falls in this red region then we go ahead and we reject the null hypothesis the test statistics if it falls in the white region then we accept the null hypothesis okay now the significance level is five percent so that means five percent of the area is already given to us okay we have the five percent probability to the right of this thing here so what do we need to find we need to find the z value for this uh, let's go to the z table okay back again and this time i've i'm given the significance level as five percent so this is five percent and this table will actually give me all these probabilities or the area to the left so what i'll do is if this is five percent this has to be 95 percent right so simply i will go ahead and i'll find 95 percent of the area and it's here 0 0.9505 and the corresponding z value for this is 1.6 and 2 the second decimal is 5 okay so this is the z value the z critical value with a significance level of 5 percent and similarly let's say that the significance level is 1 percent then that means this other region to the left should be 99 percent right so where is 99 percent here it is yeah here so the corresponding z value is going to be 2.3 and it intersects to the second decimal place is 3 so this is the z critical value for one percent significance level okay so hopefully you get the idea now so from the z table we have found the value is 1.65 the positive 1.65 so as you can see this 1.65 is the same right here and if it is a negative as i already told you the normal distribution is symmetrical in nature so for the negative it's going to be minus 1.65 if the significance level is five percent so this is highly recommended that go ahead remember these values this will actually save you a lot of time on the exam so this is the t table that i have this table actually lists out all the critical values right from the beginning till the end which will be useful in the hypothesis testing now how do you interpret this particular table so in the very first column we have the degrees of freedom and is the level of significance for a one tail test and the level of significance for the two tailed test okay so let's take an example so let's say that if i have sample of 25 observations and i want to find the critical value for this t distribution how can i do that so i will go ahead and i'll first calculate the degrees of freedom for this and that is going to be for a t, t table it's going to be n minus one that is going to be 24 okay so i'll look here 24 and then i'll find if it is a one tailed test or a two tailed test okay if let's assume that it's a two tailed test then i will look at the significance level let's say five percent okay so wherever these intersect that is 2.064 so this is my critical value for the t distribution hopefully now you can interpret this table as well all right so that's it guys thank you so much for your time today and uh, hopefully this video was helpful to you do like this video and if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel make sure that you do so thank you